Hey, you guys. You have to bear with me. I'm still learning to play with all these new fun things that we have to make these videos a little, a little less um, diamond in the rough, but keep them my personality, which is real and genuine and wanting you to feel like you're just sitting here having this cup of tea with me. So, um, yeah, that's how they should feel. And I wish that you were because this is really good tea. This is that favorite tea I talk about all the time. Good Earth. Um, what does it say today? Someday is not a day of the week. Right on, T. Right on, as always. So, drinking hot tea. I know some of you are sitting by the pool. I'm in Seattle. It's pouring rain. It's gray. And I just, as you can see from my hair, just got home from playing in the rain. Um, had a blast. I'm such literally a three-year-old that I had to run in the puddles. I had to run through the rain. Um, yeah. So, um, I'll try with my editing tools to put some of the fun, silly video that my friend was taking of me as I was being a goofball. And yes, we kept our six foot distance. This is a friend that lives close to me that we see each other all the time. And we got out, we went and got flowers today and uh, we're trying to keep a lot of the local vendors in, um, in business, you know, by buying local honey and local flowers and local vegetables and so, Instead of going to like the food giants, we get out and we go to the little market stands that are local um, and do our shopping. So that's become a fun thing. Um, and yes, I was a goofball running around in the rain being silly. Imagine that. Kelly, a goofball? Okay, fasting. Um... So I've gotten enough messages from you guys that it made sense to finally sit down and maybe do a video on it. So that's what I'm going to do as per the usual. Um, just going to share as it comes through. Um, for me, the journey started out due to uh, extreme autoimmune conditions that built up over the year where my thyroid literally stopped working and my metabolism stopped. And over a couple years period, as you guys watched in the videos, um, my body filled out and all this weight was on and I don't come from a family where anyone has weight issues. And so we knew something was wrong, but the doctors couldn't pinpoint what it was because my symptoms were so weird because I had multiple autoimmunes going on. Um, where they finally got triggered in, ironically enough, was my neck just became like a football player's, like literally, and um, clear sign of, of thyroid issues. So long story short, years and years and years of being misdiagnosed and mismedicated, um, starting all the way back when Declan and I first came back from New Zealand is when I think it all began because we had been living in New Zealand where the foods aren't processed, the dairy isn't processed, they, they're not pumping their meats full of stuff. And whether you agree with me or not agree with me, I'm only going to share what I know to be true experientially from the story of Kelly. And um, yeah, so we got back from New Zealand and started thinking we could eat the same way we were eating in New Zealand without recognizing that the foods are treated very differently here in the U.S. And, um, you know, what we call chicken breast here may not necessarily just be a chicken breast here. So... Um, The first step, I did autoimmune protocol for several years, and I had some good success with that for sure. But when this really kicked into gear for me from a healing and autophagy perspective was when I got the fasting implementation going. So is fasting a spiritual practice for me? No, it didn't start out that way. This started out for me as, again, a way to try and heal myself. I fired all my doctors. I just got fed up. I woke up. I said, no more. Not another doctor is sticking another needle in me. I'm not going to sit in another lab. I'm not going to wait for them to diagnose me again. I'm taking this in my own hands. And I trusted my intuition and I fired everybody. And I went to a, um, in, in, uh, internal medicine doctor 
um, who I basically said, look, if you want to do this journey with me, I will pay you to do my labs regularly so that we're making sure I'm safe, but I am not going to take supplements you recommend. I'm not going to go on medication. This needs to be a team effort or nothing at all. She was very hesitant at first, but I think she was somewhat curious about what I was wanting to do. And so she signed up. So long and short, um, this started for me about, well, not about, on December 4th, 2017. I don't know why that was the day, but that was the day that I said, this is it, I'm done. And I got up and that day started um, uh, intermittent fasting. So there's so many different variations of fasting. So before anybody jumps in and starts messaging me, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a nutritionist, um, I'm not an intern medicine person, um, I'm somebody who's used this to heal my own body and I'm sharing just from an experiential perspective. So whatever you take from it, awesome, but I, definitely say you get someone to guide you with your blood work and watch you and follow you closely. Don't stop taking medications, et cetera, et cetera. All the things that you should clear with your doctor. Okay. So we'll get the fine print out of the way. Um, but I really mean that, you know, I genuinely mean that. Make sure you're starting from a healthy baseline. And it's really good to get your baseline blood work done because that baseline blood work is what you're going to be able to compare to as your body starts to heal. And it's so freaking cool when it starts to happen. Okay, so December 4, 2017, I got up and the first thing I decided to implement was intermittent fasting. Basically, the theory behind intermittent fasting and the science behind it, which can be backed in multiple documentaries I'm happy to share, um is about giving your body a stable amount of time where you're not raising the insulin levels by not eating. And your body, by virtue of not being fed, goes into cleaning mode. It goes into restorative mode. It goes into what's known as autophagy, where the old dead cells start to collapse and they get replaced by new cells. Um, and so there's lots of scientific theories about the best method. Um, but for me, I started with what's known as the 18-6 intermittent fast, where for 18 hours I was fasting, most of which you're sleeping, you know, about eight hours, your sleep of that. And then um, six hours is your, your feeding window. So for the 18 hours, I would have black coffee and water, um, Pellegrino water is my favorite. It's a mineral water. So by default has its minerals built in there, which you need to restore and replenish when you're fasting. Um, but you can also just have regular water with a little bit of pink salt. And I don't mean a lot of pink salt, like literally just a little pinch and stir it in there. You don't even taste it, but that is your potassium. It's your magnesium. It's giving you those mineral, natural essential minerals that you need, um, when you're fasting that your body depletes. You do not need to waterlog when you're fasting. That's a myth. And you are not starving your body. Your body has enough fat to feed you. Oh boy, I hate to tell you, it doesn't matter how fit you are. We can go a long time without food. My longest so far is 19 days. Um, and I did a full, um, coffee water fast and I loved it. And now I do a mix and a blend. I'm constantly mixing it up. But when you start, you want to start with a, you know, something that's sustainable and your body has to acclimate to this new way of eating and new way of living. And so you don't want to rush right in with a full blown extended fast um, number one, you'll end up losing your willpower and sustainability, and it'll become really uncomfortable for your body, and it'll, you'll be miserable, and you'll yo-yo. And that's not the intention of this. This is not a diet. This is a way of being, and it is a way of living. And it's what I've adopted, and I absolutely thrive here. Okay, so for 18 hours, you're either sleeping, resting, doing your normal daily stuff. Black, 
black coffee, water, Pellegrino, um, tea. You want to stay away from anything that's going to raise your insulin. So sucralose, which is the sugar-free, you know, uh, stuff that they have out there. Um, there's some debate about whether stevia is okay. I wasn't affected by it. I took my glucose readings and no impact at all. So I could have that, but there's some people who are super sensitive. The body thinks you're giving it sugar. Insulin goes up by default. You've basically canceled out your fast. So the best, cleanest, and purest way is black coffee or water. And um, tea is an option. But again, you want to be careful about fruity teas or any of the teas that have even a remote sweet taste to them because, again, the body is very smart and thinks insulin's going up. So green tea is great, black tea is great, caffeinated, decaffeinated, either or. So that's what I would have in my 18 hours. When it was my fasting time, I chose to use keto as my way of eating. Um, and not the keto that many people know where you live on bacon burgers and cheese and a bunch of crud. Clean, purest keto, meaning grass-fed, grass-finished, um, healthy meats. Um, uh, there's certain vegetables that are really good for keto, like broccoli, cauliflower, um, asparagus, um, obviously spinach, nice green spinach uh, salad. Um, but you know, keto was my chosen way of eating in my eating window. You don't have to do keto. I found the combination for what I was attempting to do to heal my body was the right combination for me. But again, N does not equal one. You have to find the right mix, the right blend, and what works for you that is sustainable. So gotta keep all that in mind. And that's a lot to keep in mind. So I would fast for the 18 hours, autophagy is happening. And when I felt hungry, I would ride the wave. It's called riding the fasting wave. You drink more electrolytes and nine times out of 10, you weren't hungry at all, you were thirsty. And your body is craving the nutrients it hasn't had. So electrolytes again, pink salt, covers it all. It's got your potassium, it's got your magnesium, gives you everything you need. So literally, we think drinking Gatorade is good for us. It's full of sugar. Um, and yes, I'm fully sugar and sh processed anything free. Um, that's part of keto. Um, so I don't have anything that's not out of the box, literally. Um, and again, this is where I thrive, but you have to find what works for you what's sustainable for you. If it's just eating real food in your window and you're monitoring how much sugar you're having and you're monitoring, monitoring how much processed stuff you're having and you're not reactive to those foods, awesome for you. I'm reactive to them. Um, dairy, um, eggs, uh, sugar. I'm highly allergic to cane sugar. Like it's my number one food allergy. Um, mushrooms, oddly enough, I was eating tons of mushrooms in my fresh salads. I was making myself sicker, didn't know it. Almonds, who would have thunk? Kelly's allergic to almonds. So I was drinking almond milk. Soy, another bad one for thyroid. Didn't know it, was having soy. So we convince ourselves that these things we're told are health foods are the right foods, um, but N doesn't equal one. N doesn't equal one. So what is okay for one person isn't okay for another. So we have to find the equation for our unique body. Sorry, I'm trying to talk fast because I don't want this video to be hours long. So in my eating window for that six hours, I would normally have one, possibly two meals. And that's all I felt hungry for because one of the benefits and by factors of being in ketosis, which is what happens when you do keto, is that you're not hungry. So um, your body gets what's known as fat adapted and it doesn't crave food. So when you're in your fasting window, you might have grumbles and you go, oh, 
you're not hungry, you're bored, let's go get some um, electrolytes or let's go take a walk or let's go take a hot bath. If you're still hungry after, we'll look at that. And nine times out of 10, you're not. You ride that fasting wave and in 10 minutes, it's gone because your body knows to go eat fat. So now when my stomach grumbles, I love it. I'm going, oh my gosh, my body is busy eating fat, which is what we want. Now how you get to extended fasting is very simple. You work your way up. So if you start with an 18-6 intermittent fast schedule and you're trying to work towards extended, start to close the gap in your eating window. So now fast for 19 hours and have a five hour eating window. And that doesn't mean you're eating the whole five hours, it just means you wanna eat whatever meals you're gonna eat in that period. Got it? So that means you're kind of boxing in when your insulin's going up and down so that you have more of a window where your body is in um, its resting state where it's not trying to break foods down, where it will go and find fats to eat. So the reason you compartmentalize it and break it off is you want to keep that control over when your insulin's going up and down and retrain the body. So you just continue to reduce the eating window. You go down from six hours of eating window to five to four to three to two to one. All of a sudden now you're making it a full 24 hours without eating and now you can start to do blends. So one of my favorites and Dr. Uh, Fung, who is the expert in fasting, um, and that's spelled F-U-N-G. He wrote The Obesity Code. You can look it up. It's a really good book. Um, and it's not just about obesity. It talks about health and fasting as well. Um, he really recommends that you do th what's known as three 36-hour fasts. So you fast for 36 hours, and then you eat for whatever your window is going to be and then you go right back into your next 36 hours and then you have your refeed and again you go into your next 36 hour window so i do blends i now have days where i eat one meal a day um, and it's a keto meal um, and then i might go for a 36 hour fast and then I might go for a 72 hour and then I may get really crazy and throw in a 116 hour, which is seven days. And I love doing those. That's where the deep healing really happens. And again, there's lots of experts out there that'll tell you that to get the full autophagy benefit, you want to fast long. And then there's other doctors who say the benefits really in that 72 hour gap. Um, and if that's sustain sustainable for you, do that. Do a 42-hour fast, refeed, and then go right back into another 42-hour fast. Again, what's happening during this fasting window? Your body is healing. It's regenerating the cells, restoring them, repurposing them. Um, it's removing the toxins from the body. It's removing any inflammation from the body from the foods that the body reacts to. What starts to happen? You start to feel amazing, number one. That's the immediate sign that it's working. Number two, you sleep better than you've ever slept. Um, you start to heal. Inflammation starts to let go. Um, toxins start to come out of the body. If you're needing to reduce your weight, weight starts to naturally fall off. Um, that's just a by-factor of this. A lot of it's the inflammation at first, and then it starts to become the fat and the extra pounds. Um, you're cleaning up any visceral fat, which is the most important. Visceral fat is around your organs, guys. So around your liver, around your stomach, around your heart, you have visceral fat. That's the first place it stores. So you might think somebody's in really good shape, but their body fat level's really high still if they get measured. And that's 
And I'm not talking about the thing that people do with the little plastic clip. I'm talking about if you go to a physician and they do a, a body fat scale reading. Um, and the doctor looks at them and says, you look like you're in pretty good shape. There's probably a lot of visceral fat around their organs. And that's the stuff we want to go. And it's usually what goes first, which is super cool. So when you're in your fasting, the visceral fat is literally being eaten off by your own body. Um, blood work starts to shift and things start to change. And um, Milo, leave it. Your skin starts to get clear and your mood starts to settle. Most people who have depression and anxiety issues, it release, it relates to something they're eating. It's crazy. I was so allergic to sugar and I didn't know it. it was giving me high anxiety to the point where I was getting to where I didn't want to drive a car um, because my anxiety, anxiety was through the roof and I found out my body was in fight or flight mode because I was eating cane sugar even though I was eating it very minimally and I was on a really good protocol, that little bit was enough to put my body in fight or flight mode. It's crazy what these foods will do to us. And we don't even know it until we remove them from our diet. Okay, so now you're consciously picking different schedules to keep the body guessing. You're just eating healthy, real food. It's called jerf. Just eat real food. It's not hard. Or pick a way of eating that you want to combine with your fasting. For me, it is a very healthy version of ketos, keto. Um, you can do pretty much anything, guys. It's really what's sustainable for you. If you're not allergic to a food, if you don't have a gluten sensitivity, if you're not allergic to sugar, I'm not saying you have to get rid of those, but what happened for me is I became so strict, my body just buzzed and hummed because I was always in ketosis, and then I would refeed, and I would go right back into my ketosis, um, and I would let myself have healthy carbs like um, sweet potato with really good uh, grass-fed butter on my with my window um, and my eating. And I just continued to refeed and go right into the next fast. Now it's just a way of my being. I wake up and I just say, okay, what are we doing today? And if the body feels led to fast, we'll pick whatever that window looks like and we'll do it. And if I get invited to go out to eat or to go do something, I have the flexibility to just shift my eating window and kind of adjust it to my circumstances for that day. Um, I am in what's known as homeostasis, but I have some areas that I'm still working on. Um, by virtue of the amount of weight that I did lose through all the inflammation and all the things that would happen with my body, with my thyroid dying, um, I do have some areas of loose skin, some on my face that I'm working on, um, some on my tummy area and my arms. My legs are actually in pretty darn good shape, which is weird to me, but I've always been very um, gymnast built, uh, mus more mus on the muscular side. So I think that had something to do with it. Um, the upper back, um, those are my, what I would call problem areas that I'm still working on toning. And um, you can't target you know, what you're doing with your body, but you can do things that lend to its graciousness, if you will, of healing. For me, um, I do some light weightlifting. I do Pilates. I do yoga. I dance, you guys. I put on my favorite music and I just rock out. I don't care how I look. I will do a video for you guys. You'll laugh at me but I don't care. I'm not doing it to try and look any certain way. I'm not doing it to impress anyone. I'm just doing it to move, to get the body moving. And dance is actually a really healthy way of high intensity interval training. You're moving all the parts, you're getting everything moving and going and lifting that heart rate and stretching everything out. So it's about movement. It's about movement. Um, 
is this part of a healing practice? Is this part of a spiritual practice? As I said earlier, it wasn't my intention for getting into it, but absolutely has it been beneficial. Um, I'm more clear. When I meditate, I immediately can go into beautiful hypnosis without anything churning. Um, my skin, my body, my hair, everything is healing. Um, I lost my a lot of my hair when I first started and I literally had to get my hair cut really, I don't know if you guys remember that, but really short for a little while while it's growing in, but now you can see all these baby hairs. This is where the regrowth is coming in. And um, my skin, you know, I'm working on the tightening of the skin. I personally choose not to do uh, Botox or surgery or whatever. Um, don't judge others who've chosen to do that, but I've worked so hard to heal my body. I don't wanna add foreign objects to it. So autophagy, one of the gifts of fasting is it's like a fountain of youth. Your skin starts to, being a protein, starts to build new collagen and it will it will tighten up. It'll take longer than going to a doctor and getting Botox. But there are areas like this one, like in my neck, forehead, where a woman might go get Botox around the eyes. Um, with autophagy, that healing part, the proteins will start to heal themselves and it will start to tighten. And I've seen it already on my face. It's already happening um, and in other areas on my body. But it's a slower process than a surgery would be, but I'm okay with that. I am now 52 years old and this is my way of being. I am the clearest I've ever been. I'm off all medication. I've healed all four of my autoimmune conditions. Um, I'm still strict as strict can be. I do not do processed foods. I don't eat sugars. Um, I'm pretty close to being what I would call keto carnivore. Um, again, I don't want to debate that with anyone. That's my choice. Um, and um, it has been very healing for somebody with thyroid issues. Um, Hashimoto thyroiditis um, is, is the autoimmune part that I had, um, which relates to being hyper, um, uh, hyperthyroid versus hypothyroid. But I'm told this cures both. Um, fasting in a different routine, possibly. Um, supplements. The key for me is keeping those electrolytes up. Potassium, magnesium are the keys. Um, trace minerals, super duper important. Um, if you have a thyroid issue, um, you want to make sure your iodine's okay. Um, what else? which is why taking that initial uh, baseline is, is, is crucial. You, you wanna make sure that whatever you and your internal doctor decide to do or naturopath or whoever you end up working with, that you're always in a mindset that you're trying to slowly reduce any medications that you're on. As your body begins to de, uh, decommission and detox all of the, the toxins and the cells, Obviously, you're going to lose weight. You're going to lose inflammation. You're going to want to adjust your medications. And that's a slow process, but well worth it. It felt so good to go in and get my lab work done and have that conversation of, okay, we can start reducing this one or we can start reducing that one um, to where I'm no longer on any medication at all, fully medication-free, um, sleep better than I've ever slept, am the happiest I've ever been. Serotonin receptors in my brain are on high, not, not fight or flight. They're in normal high operating stance now, like a normal human being where I was living in fight or flight. I was literally going blind. Um, I've spoken about this before where I was losing my eyesight and it was really bad to the point where the doctor was starting to prep me that I wouldn't be allowed to drive legally. Um, 
what else was going on? God, I had geographic tongue, which is where the whole tongue is cracked and painful all the time. I had several skin issues, um, psoriasis, eczema, um, you name it. Um, I had high blood pressure, high cholesterol. What else? Um, I could go on and on. The point is, I've healed all that. I'm off all medications and I'm in the best place. And spiritually, it's also completely opened me up in a new way. But again, that wasn't the initial intention, nor was the weight loss. Those were hopeful byproducts that actually paid off. So I hope this is helpful. This is really an intro. Um, but now if you're, if from hearing what I've shared, you're interested, go out and do some research. Um, read the obesity code by Dr. Fung. Look at, um, bulletproof, um, Dave Asprey and the stuff that he's doing. Um, yeah, I mean, there's lots of opportunity to inquire and investigate this. Facebook has some great groups where you can go off and learn. Um, Dave Asprey is all about biohacking his body. He wants to live past 100, but he wants to look like he's in his 70s. And I, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be him. Um, he was the inventor and creator of Bulletproof Coffee, which you can also Google and learn more about. Um, his books are amazing. Um I also like, oh, what's his name? I might have to put, Dr. Berg. Dr. Berg, B-E-R-G. If you decide to do the, the ketosis way of eating, he has some really awesome videos out there that are free. Some of his get a little frustrating because he does a lot of ad stuff um, and he markets a lot of products that he sells with his name on it, as does Dave Asprey from Bulletproof. Um, but if you can get past that, which I can because I offer so much free, um, they're great YouTubes and things to research to find your way. The Magic Pill documentary on Netflix, great one to watch. Um, the Science of Fasting, which is a free one that you can watch on YouTube, incredible. Um, I think just getting those under your belt would have enough exposure for you to realize why this is so important. What sugar is doing to the body, um, it's worse than heroin and crack. It's worse than cocaine. It's more addictive. And what it does to the mind is incredible. What it does to the gut and the skin, horrific. Your gut is the brain for the body. That's the first thing that has to be healed for the healing to really take effect. So the first couple weeks when you get started, don't be hung up on weight loss or any kind of major shift. It takes a good three weeks for your body to go, okay, you're shifting something. I need to catch up. Give your body three weeks to catch up. It's going to catch up. And if you're addicted to sugar, the first couple of days are going to be rough. But if you keep those electrolytes going, the sugar cravings will go away. And then what happens is that clarity and the ability to make better choices kicks in. Um, but what we're doing to our bodies with this processed food and what we're giving to our children with these food dyes and these processed foods, um, we're not giving ourselves a fair shot to be healed and whole. And our guts, our guts, they're, they're really struggling. And this is why, you know, men are having more prostate issues and women are having more breast cancer issues. And 99.9% .9 of it can be traced back to sugar. Sugar. It's scary. So just do your own research. I think I've shared enough for you if this is something that's of interest for you to take it now and go do your own research and find those nuggets that make sense. 
And I wish you the absolute best. I hope this was helpful. I know this isn't my normal type of posting, but I had enough of you messaging me asking about it that I thought it made sense to sit down and do a video. Sorry, it's 34 minutes long. I'm also going to put something humorous at the end, so keep watching. Hopefully I figure out how to edit it in because it's me being silly, my usual three-year-old self. I love you guys. Until next time. Movement. It's about movement. Get that vibration up. Get up. Move your butts. Come on. Life isn't over. This isn't the end. This is the beginning. You can lift the vibration all by yourself. You don't need to have a house full of people. This is what I do every day. I put music on. I let it pick the song and I just dance. Dance my ass off. Literally. <laughs> Milo looks at me like I'm absolutely nuts. Right, Milo? And the cat can't even be bothered with me. Watch. Right, Doodle? They both think I'm nuts, and I probably am. But life is not over. Get your butt up. Find something that lifts your spirits and move, move. Get happy. And yes, I have very eclectic taste in music. It goes from ACDC to country to dance to rap all over the charts. And I don't care how I look. I'm not trying to impress anyone. It's about movement. It's about just getting up and letting this body be alive again. We're stuck in this seriousness and we're meant to be the vibrational happy beings that we are. Doing things we love with people we love or by ourselves. Silliness, but it's what brings joy. Love you guys.